Hey everyone, it's Erin, and today I'm going to be just giving some tips on making rough sheets. I've done these a lot recently, just because they're fun for me to make, but I also like to look more in-depth into my characters, and I prefer to do that over having a list of details. I'm a very visually oriented person, so I figure I could tell you it while this video is going on, so at least that way it's topical. First things first is that it's okay not to know the character 100% when you start the rough sheet. I knew nothing about Skylar. I just knew that I really wanted to make this character into an OC and really wanted to keep drawing him. So I started drawing and as I drew I started coming up with ideas. Which is another thing is that if you can you should try to think about fun facts while you're drawing. It can give you more ideas for like different outfits or things to draw on other parts of the page, like I drew Skylar's bag and its contents. It seems very daunting at first when you start a rough sheet and you have no clue about the character, but as you keep drawing, then you tend to get more ideas just because your brain's trying to think about what to draw. Another tip is to look at other rough sheets. The entire time I was drawing this, I had just searched rough sheets on DeviantArt and was looking at those. Just that way I had something to go off of because I didn't want to just go off of what I normally do because I feel like my rough sheets are usually boring to look at and I want to fix that considering I'm doing them as commissions. I don't really have any specific artist rough sheet I looked at for this, I don't recall off the top of my head. There were quite a few I looked at. Like, for the background that I eventually add, and, um, just stuff in general. Another thing is clothing. I had no idea what to draw Skylar in when I first started drawing him. In the only other picture I had of him at the time, he was in a button-down with polka dots, and I didn't want to just do that. So I made that one of his alternate outfits up in the corner, and made his main outfit that you can see a turtleneck. I also had the idea that maybe he only has one pair of pants that aren't completely torn up. So I went with that and I ended up making that a fact about him and same goes for his shoes. So while it's not the most interesting fact, it's a very relatable one I guess, <laughs> to me at least. That's another thing, you tend to always put yourself into your OCs in some way and not everybody does that, especially if they have a lot of OCs with, that are very varied. But I don't, so a lot of my OCs have stuff in common with me because you know yourself the best. You take from yourself a lot when you draw it right. Another way that you could come up with ideas for a rough sheet is to try to think about how they would react to certain situations. Panicking or being ecstatic over something, how would they react to it suddenly raining on them or their foot being stepped on or something like that. And those are very mundane things, but it's the first thing I could think of, I guess. But yeah, as an example of Skylar, I, I just now thought that maybe he's allergic to cats, but he really likes them and would definitely stick his scribble mass of a face into a cat. He would also not be mad at someone or get or blow up at someone for stepping on his foot because he's a very anxious coward, I guess. That's just some things I've come up with off the top of my head for him. Another thing is that sometimes it's hard to think of ideas for clothing. And I touched on this a bit a few minutes ago, but I tend to look on Polyvore or Tumblr under aesthetic and fashion tags. And even just a Google search of like Japanese street fashion or Korean street fashion, I tend to go off of stuff like that just from a Google search and it gives me great ideas for outfits that I normally wouldn't draw just off the top of my head. Don't worry about getting every detail down. That's a problem that I have, especially when I'm starting out on a rough sheet, is trying to think about every single detail. That can lead you to wanting to just not finish the drawing. But, like I said with Skylar, I knew nothing about him when I first started drawing, except that I had based him off of anxiety. And another thing on that topic is to not be afraid to go back and change stuff. Even after you've already posted the rough sheet, you can always go back and fix stuff because it's your drawing and it's your information. Especially on pages like DeviantArt, you can just go back and update the description with whatever. Because while I only have like three or four details about Skylar on this 
rough sheet, by the end of it, I went back on DeviantArt and I just have a whole list of things that are details about Skylar. So that way I know. And if anybody wants to draw him one day, or if I want to go back and draw him, then I can just look back to that list that I've added onto the drawing and see more details about him and then draw from that if I need to. Another tip that I have is to only use flats on reference sheets unless you absolutely need to use shading for some reason. Like, personally, I don't like to shade rough sheets just because it it's supposed to be for information. If you shade it, then that puts it in a particular setting. Think about a rough sheet as if it's just your character standing in an empty box where you're just laying out all the information based on them. That way, it's easier for you to focus on the information and the design as opposed to making it like painterly or a full illustration. Characters always change as you do. No character is going to be the exact same in a year since you've made them. Even if it's just minute little things, then they're going to change. As an example, years and years ago when I first got a paint set, I had to have been like 11. I painted this character who I named Hiyoko because I was a humongous weeaboo. And I just wanted to come up with a character that sounded like it was from Inuyasha. So I made her and I was also on a Soul Eater stint at the time. And she had bright pink highlights in her hair and basically an above the crotch tattoo that I think was supposed to be a belly button tattoo, but I had drawn her belly button up higher. But yeah, it has been almost a decade since then and I redrew her last year as a completely different character. She is now basically a vaporwave mage, so every character changes. Like, that's more of an extreme case, but even characters that I thought about last year are different now. And while I don't have any examples off the top of my head, you can just look at anyone's deviant art and see how it's changed. It's like a sona. Your sona changes with you, so. Your OC changes with you, your mind changes, your characters change. Another thing is just to have fun with it. Like, I get way stressed, way overly stressed over coming up with characters sometimes. And you should always just try to have some fun with it because it's a character that you're making. And usually you don't have a deadline for that unless you're in school. Which, in that case, then you should still try to have fun with it. Even if it's stressing you out. Because in the end it's your character. Like, you have full creative liberty pretty much for any character you create. Always take breaks is another thing, especially when making a rough sheet. You can get really trapped in a rut and then forget so many crucial things. Like, I had thought that Skylar's favorite animals were birds and fish. I gave him a phone charm with a cat head on it, and it wasn't until recently, like just a few minutes ago where I said that he's allergic to cats but he likes them, that I have an excuse for that now. So, with any art, you always need to step back and take a look at it. And when doing something as detail-oriented as a rough sheet, that's especially important because you can blind yourself to the details. I don't have any other tips that I can think of right now for making a rough sheet, but there's so many resources online. And if you need any help, then there's so many DeviantArt pages and Tumblr pages and everything that can help you come up with ideas and help you figure out how to put them out onto your paper. Never be afraid to look for resources like that. It can feel like cheating when you're first starting out, but it's important to know that you should never be wary of actually looking for help. Art, like literature, is never a completely original thing. We all have developed in our own ways by looking at other people's art as we grow and as we learn, and then we get our styles and our ideas and such from that. Looking at a reference is never a bad thing, and looking at a resource is never a bad thing. And that can always be incredibly intimidating. Even if you are not copying anyone or anyone's art, then imposter syndrome and other things like it can make it feel like you are and give you self-doubt and make you not want to draw. Aside from that, I think I'm out of tips for this video, but hope you enjoyed the rest of it and thank you for watching.